Welcome to 805 Focus. I'm Dr. Cinder Sinclair with Nonprofit Connect, and we will be bringing you the latest on your favorite nonprofits. So get ready to be inspired. Our special guest today is Jamie Dufek, and Jamie is the chair of the board of directors for the Women's Fund of Santa Barbara. Welcome, Jamie. Thank you for having me. Oh gosh, you know, you folks are doing such important work and you have grown so exponentially. It's just fascinating and inspiring. Mm, thank and you. And so please tell us uh, what the Women's Fund is doing these days. Yeah, so the Women's Fund of Santa Barbara is a nonprofit organization. We are a collective donor organization, mm -hmm. uh, which makes us unique. We have over 1,200 members this year, um, and we all come together to pool our charitable dollars. Gosh, and if I remember, you started sometime, what, 2004? We did, we started in 2004, a group of 12 women around a table that um, had some, some ideas and challenges that they were seeing in the community and took off and created this organization. Yeah, that's just, uh... And it's amazing. I understand there are women's funds other places, but, but this still is a real unusual concept and really has taken off. It has. So, you know, the, the 12 women that sat around the table were really, they were visionaries. Yes. Um, they, the model is really giving circles and given, giving circles have taken off in the U.S. and the Women's Fund of Santa Barbara is actually one of the largest in the country. Is that right? Mm -hmm. Wow, is it one of the oldest or it just grew fast? I don't know if it's one of the oldest, but it is one of the largest. Last This past year, we gave away $925,000 in grants yeah. to South Santa Barbara County nonprofits. Gosh. Yeah. So, all right, how do you decide who you're going to give to? I know you have a unique way of deciding that, so please tell us all about it. We do. So we, um, we combine our charitable dollars, so members, uh, pay a membership fee and that goes into our grants pool. So we give first and then we have a research team which are 13 volunteers uh, who go out and research what the critical needs are in our community for women, families, um, and children. And they do an extensive research process and create a ballot. And then each year we, as members, get to see the ballot and vote on which nonprofits to give grants to. Okay, so let's just sort of unpack that a little bit. So they do research on the needs. How do they do that? How do they know like where to look? And so there's, there's a few different ways that we evaluate the critical needs within the community. Mm -hmm. First is within membership. So we send out surveys to our members to get their input on what they're seeing in oh, the community, okay. um, the, the types of nonprofits and rank what they see as critical needs. So it, it's very specialized and local to Santa Barbara. Um, but then the research team does takes a lot of care and thought when thinking about this as well. And they actually last year went out and did what we called walking tours with nonprofit leaders, oh. um, other, other leaders within the community to also learn more about what the needs are. So 1,200 members and out of that 13 make up this research, that's sort of the beginning of kind of deciding who you're going to give to. So how do those 13 people get chosen and are they different every year or? So they, they aren't chosen. The Women's Fund is another unique aspect is that we are a volunteer led organization. Mm -hmm. So we have over 180 volunteers that um, work in different committees um, that make up our operations team, if you will, uh -huh. uh, and the research committee is a committee that members can volunteer for. Oh, so these are 13 okay. women who are volunteering their, their time and, and energy to um, research the community and then create the ballot for us each year. Okay, so now these 13 women have gone out, <clears throat> done their research. So how do they, so the ballot, is that now are we down to individual organizations that people are going to vote on and how do those how, how does that get on the ballot those individual nonprofits from the needs assessment 
Correct. So we have a we have a large database of nonprofits that mm -hmm. the research committee can pull from and research and look and 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 see where uh, the the needs are lining up each mm -hmm. year. They create the ballot and then the ballot goes out to membership um, and groups will come together and and vote on those and then we announce the results at a celebration of grants once a year. That's great. And I seem to remember reading that a nonprofit. Um, is not supposed to like apply. You, they're supposed to be invited and then they fill out the Correct. application. Correct. Great. So um, this is just this is just so amazing. So all of these went all right. Let's let's ask this. How does a person become a member? It's actually really simple to become a member. Okay. Um, you can go to our website and you join. If you are the, there's no major obligation except for your membership dues each year, which is a minimum contribution of $275. Okay. Um, and then the the max contribution is whatever you you decide, but it's really simple to become a member. There's no there's no invitation, it's, and you can go on the website and join. That sounds pretty easy. So anybody. Man or woman? Um, men can contribute and donate to the Women's Fund, but to be a voting member, you do have to be a woman. Okay, gotcha. All right, so a person, 275 is the lowest. Mm -hmm. um, and, but then don't people um, form groups? So, and, and you get so many votes per. Yes, they do. So, so somebody like myself, I would not be able to um, contribute and give a grant of a hundred thousand dollars to a nonprofit in Santa Barbara. But mm -hmm. what I can do is I can pay two hundred and seventy-five dollars. I join a group, which my group has ten fabulous women in it, and we each contribute to create a twenty-five hundred dollar donation together, collective to the grants pool, okay. and that equals one vote. Okay. And so annually, my group gets together. We actually make a fun night of it. We look at the ballot. We um, look at all the information about the nonprofits that are on the ballot, and we collectively, in our small group, decide what is the one vote that we're going to cast for the nonprofits that would be receiving grants. That's great, <laughs> and and that's wonderful that you make a fun night. A day it of is. It. Yeah. So, how many votes then are collected? So, so the votes, the number of votes are re really dependent on the amount that the grants pool is. Oh, because, okay, okay, so that makes sense. It's, it's not as important about how many votes there are total. Um, we focus a lot on how do we contribute the most that we can to create the largest grant pool to give away that year. Okay. All right, so now we've got the ballot mm -hmm. and we've got the women in groups. Um, and so then each, well, not each member, but each uh, equivalent, 2,500 equivalent, mm -hmm. gets a vote and they vote on the ballot. Correct. And then that, how, so do you have the same number of nonprofits you give to each year or is um, it different? So the research committee really does a nice job of figuring out how many agencies would be on the ballot. It's it differs each year. Okay. Um, it differs based off of the need and what the agencies are applying for in their grant. So with the Women's Fund, what I really love is that I see it as these are transformational grants. So we okay. aren't giving grants that are less than $50,000 a piece, mm -hmm. and there's no ceiling to what it could be. So we've given a $180,000 grant in the past. And so depending on what the need is from the community that your research has they have their own just behind the scenes magical things that they make happen, um, but they create a ballot with usually somewhere between 12 to 15 agencies, mm -hmm. um, all differing in the amount that they're asking for as well. Okay, and so when you tell the nonprofits, you know, some amount of information for what they need to include, I, I love it that you want something you want them to apply for something that's what you call transformational for their organization. Mm -hmm. For their organization or for the community or both? So the nonprofits will apply for grants for their organization that are 
real-time immediate needs okay. and we see them as transformational because they can be for a number of, of different things. It can be programmatic projects um, or capital grants as well um, and I think that that's something that is unique because you don't see as many capital grants going out as often. So for example we have funded a lot of vehicles for nonprofits. Mm -hmm. You know Easy Lift is one of them, the food bank, um, a refrigerated truck to help transport food mm -hmm. is a capital grant. Um, we did in some air conditioning units oh, for yeah. a nonprofit as well. And so those those are larger projects and, and capital improvements. Yeah, yeah. That's that's just uh, pretty exciting and I know so inspiring for all of your members to oh so I went to the uh, award ceremony mm, the celebration last of grants mm -hmm. yeah I've gone several years this last yeah. year it, you know it's always so inspiring because each one gets up and tells what they're going to use the grant for and it, I, every one of them had a great presentation and a wonderful project oh yeah I mean I see our grantees as also partners in the community they help educate our med, our membership on what's going on and what needs they're, they're meeting and the, the things that come up as well. So, you know, it's really, I also love the celebration of grants um, because I get to hear about a diverse amount of nonprofits and, and what they're doing and what these grants will allow them to continue to yeah. do or expand upon and everything that they're doing in the community. Yeah, so you make a really good point. Not only are these nonprofits benefiting and not only are individual women able to make their own contribution towards, you know, a, a, a benefit or a solution. Um, but all of the members are learning more about the community as you go through the process. A hundred percent. And that's part of the Women's Fund mission is to empower women to leverage their charitable dollars, uh -huh. but also create strong women philanthropists within the community as well. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Oh man, that's a great. So, um, how would you describe? I don't know. Let's, let's say the values of uh, the Women's Fund the Women's of Fund. Santa Barbara. We we have a set of core values. Um, I won't name them all, but I think <laughs> I think that the the two that probably stand out the most to me are um, integrity and collaboration. I'm gonna throw. I'm gonna do one more trust as well. Oh, oh um, yeah. You know, it's really when we have nine hundred twenty-five thousand dollars to give to the community in a yeah. single year. That's a large responsibility, and it takes a lot of integrity and trust. Because one of the things about being a women's fund member, and was part of the founding idea, is that the twelve women that were sitting around the table wanted to write a check and make a difference. Yeah. They were tired of going to galas, they were tired of going to fundraisers and all of that. And so the reason why I say that is because every woman that joins the, the Women's Fund of Santa Barbara trusts that their donation is going to be given and make an impact in the community. Mm -hmm. And this organization blows me away because we are we 100% do that. I have complete trust in all of the volunteers who mm -hmm. give so much time, energy, and expertise to our research process, mm -hmm. to the behind the scenes of just the the unsexy things of collecting donations yeah. and, and, and tracking all of that. Our financial um, committee is amazing. And then collaboration as a value for us is huge. When you have an organization that is you know, slated to hopefully give a million dollars next year, you need to be able to collaborate, strategically think, and at a volunteer-led level, that is not an, necessarily an easy thing as well. Right, right. I could see that could get <laughs> uh, yeah. a little challenging. Mm -hmm. But we have so many women who are so intelligent and giving of their time and all towards that North Star of, of leveraging our dollars to yeah. make a difference. So, um, tell us about your goals for the for the near future. So I I, um, I said just a, a little bit, but we are celebrating our twentieth anniversary next year, okay. um, and we are hoping to do 
a million or more in 2024. A million or more in 2024. <laughs> I like the sound of that. <laughs> that is great. And I think we'll do it. Yeah. So that means you're going to get more members and <clears throat> or you're going to have m existing members donate more dollars. Um, can a person, is there a certain time of year when a person should join or just they can just join anytime? So a member can, a member can join anytime. Um, our grant cycle though is May to May and oh, so okay um, it sometimes that takes a little bit for I still re think about it and have to have it register a little bit but um, but anybody can join any time of year once you're a member there's opportunities to connect with other members there's opportunities to be involved right away it's not just okay. that celebrations of grants um, and most women join as part of a group. So they're already meeting other women okay. when they join and things like that. Gotcha. And so, Women's Fund of Santa Barbara is a 501c3 nonprofit, right? It is. Yes. It is. So, a person could go on your website and find out, you know, more basic questions or basic information about the Women's Fund. Mm -hmm. They could find out how to join, fill out the form, uh, they can make a donation. Correct. With, there's mm -hmm. probably a donate now but there is there yeah. is on the website um, and so you don't have to be a member to donate Any, okay anybody could anybody could donate um, we actually have a lot of people that come on and make small contributions mm -hmm. which actually is a huge help because that will go that goes into our uh, operating expenses so we can keep as much of our uh, membership dues in the grants pool and have the grants pool as large as possible gosh mm -hmm. It sounds like you folks have it all figured out. It sounds like something <laughs> everyone ought to join. I, I am so proud to be a Women's Fund member, and I am excited for the new members that are going to come on this year, uh, as well as the existing members that are going to renew. You know, the, the reason why we're, we've been able to give as much as we have in the community is because we have existing members that love what, what we do and also continue to, to stay and invite others and spread yeah. the word. Yeah, yeah. And so if you're a member, then you renew each year. Correct. Your membership, okay. Mm -hmm. Gosh, well, Jamie, we have about a minute or so left. Is there anything else you'd like our audience to know about the Women's Fund of Santa Barbara? Um, you know, I think it really is just that we welcome all women to join to make uh, a difference and this year is a big year for us to to come on and join and so um, I hope that there's others in the community that will help us reach our million goal this year. I do too. <laughs> that's that's so great. Well thank you so much for all the great work you're doing touching the lives of so many people and for coming on our show today to tell us all about it. Thank you for having me. And thank you for joining us on 805 Focus and we'll see you next time.